The day is coming, burning like a furnace. Are you saved? What's going to happen to you when you die? What do you believe? How about John 14, 6? Or even better, what I have for us today. When's the last time you read Malachi? Welcome back to Rapture Alerts. My name is Sean. If you're just tuning in, this is just a guy talking about Jesus. That's all I do over here. And I'm watching and waiting for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to take us home in a pre-tribulation rapture. I hope you're happy, healthy, and well and have what you need. Friends, I got something special for you today that I found. I know it wasn't me finding it. I was directed towards it. So, of course, I'm going to bring it out here and share with you. It's Malachi 4, and it's talking about Elijah before the day of the Lord. So, we all know what we're waiting on before the day of the Lord is the rapture. That is the next thing to happen on the prophetic timeline. Do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen the comment that I posted of the non-believer, of what they said it's hilarious go take a look on the board and i think the rule of thumb we'll invoke right there is instead of not posting them we'll just start feeding them to the sharks how about that there's not much time left guys i'm getting excited it is time to go home let me get this hat off and we're going to open up a prayer like we always do and give thanks to jesus for everything that he's done he's doing and what he's about to do but even allowing me to come out here and fellowship with you read Malachi 4 and do a little bit of commentary we'll look into it further but let's talk about something exciting today like who do you think the two prophets are in Revelation right we've talked about that before I believe it to be Elijah and Moses and I got something right here you may or may not know I've never found it and Malachi is not a book that you hear like you do in Matthew Mark Luke John and Psalms and things like that so how about we fellowship today we look at something cool and exciting and we lift one another up and we give all the glory to Jesus because he is about to take us home. Thank you so much for stopping by. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for the air in my lungs right now to praise you and worship you, Father. I lift you up above all else. And I confess with my mouth today again, you're the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You're the one true God. You're the Messiah. You are the way, the truth, and the life, Father. Thank you for saving me and lifting me up and making me a new person, Father, and bringing me back to life. I pray for each and every person watching this video right now. Please give them what they need, Jesus, if it lines up with your will. Please bless this message. Please don't let anything interfere with it. And I ask that you wrap your arms around everybody watching this video, Jesus, and their families. Please take us home soon, Lord. I love you and I miss you. Amen. Check this out. You're going to love this. Let's do something a little bit different today. Malachi 4. But before we get there, listen to this. Malachi foresaw the fate of the wicked and the righteous at the second coming of Jesus Christ and prophesied that the Lord would send the prophet Elijah before the second coming to do a great work. So listen to what I just told you. Malachi foresaw the fate of the wicked and the righteous, meaning everybody's gonna be judged. Where? At the second coming of Jesus Christ. Well, what takes place before the second coming? The rapture does, right? Revelation four, we're in heaven. And prophesied that the Lord would send the prophet Elijah. So we know there's two prophets in Revelation. They're wearing sackcloth, they're walking around, and they're demonstrating God's sovereignty. All the wicked things that have been done, and mocking him, denying him over and over and over. But he has two prophets on earth. Now if you touch them, fire comes out of their mouth, right? But you can be saved. You can be a tribulation saint. You don't want to do that. You want to accept Jesus into your heart right now. Give him a chance, and he will change your life, just like he did mine. This is something cool that we can talk about, because you guys have emailed me and commented before. You get excited about who are the two prophets, right? Most of us lean towards Moses and Elijah, based off the evidence that we have. But again, just like I don't know when the rapture is, I don't know who the two prophets are. But I do get excited about this stuff. I love Elijah. I can't wait to talk to him. You go, man, you know, you... And him maybe look at us and go, me, look at, look at y'all. Y'all were alive right before he came. You know, tell me what that was like. So 
I believe we're going to be able to do those things and I'm setting my mind on the things above. I hope you're doing the same thing with me. The last part says, you know, would send the prophet Elijah before the second coming to do a great work. Before, not after, before the second coming. And then it finishes up, what's he going to do? What's his mission? To do a great work. Well, what's greater than leading somebody to Jesus, right? And them giving their soul to him, relinquishing their soul to the Father. That's what I believe they're going to be doing. That's what the Word says they're going to be doing. So here is Malachi 4. Listen to this. For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, and all the arrogant and, e and every evildoer will be chaffed. And the day that is coming will set them ablaze, says the Lord of armies, so that it will leave them neither root nor branches. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness, and that is S-U-N, by the way, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go forth and frolic like calves from the stall, and you will crush the wicked underfoot, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I am preparing, says the Lord of Armies. I love, even though it says that I am preparing, I look at it that I am preparing. It's him. It's I am. Says the Lord of armies is how it finishes up. Verse 4 says, Remember the law of Moses, my servant, the statutes and ordinances which I commanded him in Horeb for all of Israel. Now listen to this. This is awesome in verse 5. Behold, I am going to send you Elijah. Notice how we just talked about Moses. Now we're talking about Elijah. I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. Before, it says, guys, he will turn the hearts of the fathers back to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers so that I will not come and strike the land with complete destruction. Please tell me that you see this. It is jumping off the page today. I love it. How excited are you right now? It, what I'm saying is it comforts my heart to know, look at this. This is literally jumping off the page. I, I love it. You got Moses, you got Elijah. It's telling you exactly what's going to happen. It's just telling you in a different book, in a different kind of way, right? Got to love the Word of God. It's Him, right? What was in the beginning? Just the Word. And the Word was God, and it was with God, and so on. It's Him, guys. So... I hope you enjoyed that. That's Malachi 4. The last thing we're going to finish up with here is a little bit of commentary on what is the sun of righteousness? You know, like the sun in the sky. What is the sun of righteousness like we just read? So let's take a look at this together. The phrase, the sun of righteousness, appears in Malachi 4.2. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. And you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. This blessing is promised to those who fear the Lord and are ready for his return. That's us, guys. That's the whole point of the channel. That's the whole point of the community, isn't it? We're watching. We're waiting. We're, we're taking care of our business and our affairs. We, we occupy until he comes and do what's commanded of us. We don't worry. We, we, we strive for perfection. But we're watching and we're waiting, right? Son of righteousness can also be translated son of vindication. The context concerns the day of the Lord, the time when God vindicates his people and judges sin. This vindication will be clear to all like the bright light of the sunrise. The one described as the son of righteousness can be no other than Jesus Christ himself. Man, I'm getting a little choked up. Everything is done for me. I'm a little overwhelmed right now, guys. I'm sorry. I shouldn't even be sitting out here. He's so awesome, man. Let me <clears throat> let me tighten up here, okay? Whew. Yeah, let me tell you something. 
when the Holy Spirit really comes over you, you're not jumping up and down, slapping people and speaking in tongues. You can't talk. I'm telling you guys, he's so awesome and he's coming. You just got to hang on, okay? The one described as the son of righteousness <clears throat> can be no other than Jesus Christ himself. The Lord is called the Lord your righteousness in Jeremiah 23, 6. Sorry about the noise right there. It's a, uh, I don't know, helicopter. I mean, imagine that, right? <laughs> Let me pull myself back together. Listen to this. Man, it's definitely military. It's, I thought it was a helicopter. It's, that's something else. That's like a cargo C-130 or AC-130 or something. I don't know. The Lord is called the Lord your righteousness in Jeremiah 23 6 and the coming of the Messiah is pictured as a sunrise in several passages arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you that's Isaiah 60 verse 1 it's also it says see also 2nd Samuel 23 4 Habakkuk 3 4 and Luke 1 verse 78 through 79 the fact that the sun of righteousness rises with healing in its wings invokes the pictures of the wings of a bird stretched across the sky, offering healing to those below. A healing effect will infuse the earth during this time, removing the negative impact of past sins. That's Isaiah 30, 26 and 53, 5. When Christ returns, God's righteousness and peace will flood the earth. Amen. That's Isaiah 11.9 and Habakkuk 2.14. It finishes up here by saying, God's desire has always been to provide righteousness to those who trust Him. Genesis 15.6 On some occasions, God's people were said to be clothed in righteousness. Job 29.14 Psalm 132.9 Isaiah 61.10 and here in Malachi 4.2, God's people will see the Son of Righteousness Himself rising over the world. It's a picture of the future millennial reign of Jesus Christ. The darkness of the Antichrist reign will vanish, and the light of God will take its place. It's a new day dawning. God's people will revel in their freedom like, I don't know this word, Gamboling calves leaping from their stalls, Isaiah 65, 17 through 25, Hosea 14, 4 through 7, Amos 9, 13 through 15, and Zephaniah 3, 19 through 20. Guys, I'm going to set the notes down right there. We're not going to do any articles. We're not going to do any earthquakes. And you guys have to excuse me. You can see an earthquake in my soul on the camera for the world to see. I've I, I don't care. I mean, <laughs> I'm a human being. I represent the kingdom. I'm out here for Jesus. Make no mistake about that. I want to be clear before we get out of here for anybody that is just now catching this video or the channel. I'm ready. I am so ready to go home. I hope that you are. I hope you enjoyed this message. I hope that it lifted you up. I hope you're in your Bible and I hope you're praying without ceasing. Thank you so much for praying for me, uh, for me tearing my back up. It's a lot of the swelling's gone down. I got most of the herniations, you know, to a manageable level. So, you know, that's good. I really appreciate you is what I'm saying right there when you don't have to do those kind of things. Remember what we always say, if the rapture isn't right now, a few moments from now or even tonight, just do what we always say. Keep looking up and we'll see you up top.